Hello, welcome to Shaman Sisters Sessions, episode 67, The Healer Archetypes. I'm Catherine Bird. I'm here with my shaman sister, Michelle Hawk. And every week we bring you this podcast in which we dive in deep around healing, spiritual, spirituality, uh, what it's like to be a healer, a facilitator, a teacher in these works, and the evolution of consciousness on the planet, where we're at, where we're going, and what we need to do to get there. So today, I'm super excited to be talking about healer archetypes. This is a really important topic, so I think we're going to have just massive content here, so we'll get jumping in in just a second, but how are you doing, Michelle? I am pretty well, thanks. I'm feeling slightly allergic with all the, the pollen stuff going on. So if I've got to deck out and sneeze a couple of times, then that's what I'll be doing over here. But yeah, the archetype stuff is super fun. And I know, uh, you know, Kat, both you and I do work with the archetypes in different capacities in different ways. Uh, I work pretty strongly with the archetypes of the Zodiac, particularly as part of the teachings and alchemy that I do. And I know the healer archetypes show up in some of those. And I know that you focus on the archetypes of the healer within your healer's process course. So this is something that both of us teach in, in kind of our different avenues because it is so relevant and is so deeply vital to really being able to tune into these different energetic signatures and frequencies of uh, of these cast of characters so to speak yeah so uh, absolutely um it it is absolutely vital and necessary for us to be tuning into these archetypal energies so let's just kind of break that down really quickly first mm -hmm. off what are we talking about when we talk about archetypes and We've actually done a few couple episodes already on archetypes. We have. We did um, the Queens and Kings episode from October last year. So the royal archetypes of the feminine and masculine. What other archetype episodes have we done? I don't know. I might be mistaken. Maybe that was the only one. But it, felt, Maybe. it feels like we've definitely talked about archetypal energies some more in this, in this mix. Yeah. Well, I know you did... Um, I don't know. It, it's funny because we talk about it all the time. Like we talk, oh no, we talked about um, healing the archetypes. We did a healing the archetypes episode. That's right. And that was sometime last year. Uh, I, a, a few months ago, I taught an archetypes for personal transformation masterclass. And I know Kat, you were speaking about archetypes in a masterclass recently. So it's definitely very relevant in our work and our consciousness. Uh, let's just zip back through kind of that base understanding though. So we're all on the same page. When we're speaking about archetypes, we're referring to a collectively agreed upon uh, understanding of, of a certain set of traits, energies, and characteristics. Now, this is an archetype I find it really helpful to think about as a character. Now, this character is something that it exists in the collective unconscious. And that's kind of according to Jungian psychology. It's the, the understanding of a person or a label or a, a something that is pretty much everybody agrees upon without ever really talking about it. And that's where, you know, when we did our Queens and Kings episode, we were talking about the royals. And I guarantee you, if I were to say right now, like, think of a queen, think of a king, and then we were to talk about, you know, kind of what is just the very first thing that jumps to mind across the board, we would have a set of very, uh, very standardized characteristics. Right, exactly. Very well said. These are universal. Everyone has an awareness of them. They're inherited. They're sort of coded within us. So we have a, an understanding of them as we live as humans. And, you know, they've been talking about archetypes for a super long time. Uh, you know, um, of course, Jung what is very well known for bringing archetypes to the world in terms of, of going into our our psyche and our development and our relationship to these archetypal energies, but they've been talking about um, archetypes, you know, in ancient Greece and, and uh, Plato was talking about archetypes had different words for it, but these energies that we all are aware of and have relationships with. So 
you already have a relationship with the archetypes. And by exploring them, you get to understand yourself through the lens of this archetypal energy, which you may or may not be running. You may, you, you're like, you might be expressing this energy without even knowing about it. So as we explore these energies, we get to find out about them, about their sort of light aspects and their positive attributes and the things that they got going for them and also their shadows because every single one has both the uh, shadow aspect. And so by understanding them, we get to understand ourselves. We get to, you know, uh, gain more wisdom and awareness mm -hmm. of who we are and how we relate to the world. Yes, the the shadow and the light aspects or the the attributes, the gifts and the challenges of each archetype are consistent. This is one of the most important pieces of awareness when working with archetypes is if you have this set of gifts, it is probably pretty much guaranteed that you also have this set of challenges and it is part of your work of claiming the gifts of the archetype by moving through the initiations of the challenge side and i'm using that instead of light and shadow because ultimately it is all in service to the full healthy expression of the archetype and yet it is you know if we get stuck in the challenges that's where it feels like darkness that's where it feels like enormous um you know, the wounding and shadow, right? But it's through the claiming of that and using this set of tools from the challenge side that we get to come into the full expression of the gifts of the archetype. So I think that's a really important consideration is, yeah, okay, it's, you know, it's a really, let's go back to use the Queens and Kings just as a quick example, because we already did that. Looking at the Royals, part of the gifts of the Royals comes from a relationship with sovereignty, uh, service and power. And yet, in order to be in healthy, right relationship with power, especially, and, and the um, affluence and influence associated with that, we need to go through the challenges of what is my relationship to power? How is, you know, power over, power under? What is my relationship to freedom and sovereignty? What is my relationship to what it means to serve in a healthy environment? way. And, uh, and those, you know, we have a lot of collective wounding around the royals because there are, have been so many examples, so much evidence that we have of people getting stuck in the challenges of the royal archetypes. So the same goes with the healer archetypes, which we'll be speaking about today. And as we're listening through, you know, we will be talking about these are gifts of these archetypes. And these are some of the initiations through the, sh the challenge of these archetypes as well. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have these archetypes, right? There's these universal archetypes. There's so many of them. Um, and I mean, I think, what is it? And there's, there's one text that has like, you know, 70 something archetypes for you to look at. And so, but, but today we want to focus on the healer, the healer archetypes. And so, as we look at the healer archetypes as well, I know when I started looking at the different healer archetypes, I was like, oh my gosh, there are, there are so many. There are so many that are um, within this, there's like the healer, and then there's so many subdivisions of what that is and, and, and you know, who, who the healer is in the world. And I think that this is very important. I hear from a lot of people this sort of awareness or message that they're getting, this awakening into, I am a healer. And that feels so, kind of so broad stroke and so large that it's often hard to, to comprehend and, and work with and, and deal with. So mm -hmm. I think we want to get into a little bit of the subsets today and um, you know, how do we, how do we start kind of peeling apart the layers of the healer? But, you know, just to kind of start out with the larger, uh, this larger archetype of who is the healer and how do we step into that, work with that energy and that archetype. And it's, it's interesting because 
when we say healer and I've, I've put this out, you know, on my Facebook page or in different places, like, you know, when you say the word healer, people have very strong emotions. And that is one of the uh, things that when you, when you feel into an archetype, it, it invokes an emotion, it invokes an emotion inside of you. Like you have a response, you have a feeling about it. And uh, the healer is a big, a big one, I think, for, for a lot of people. I think it's appropriate for this conversation to visualize the healer sort of as an umbrella for this case, you know, so there are, you know, Kat, as you're talking about, there's so many subdivisions, sub archetypes of the overall healer archetype, each with their own unique energetic signatures that again, you know, I, I do think that's part of where people get a little tripped up of like, okay, well, I'm a healer. Now what? Or like, what does that mean? And, and that's going to be different for everybody based on this sub archetypal exploration. So let's tune into, you know, kind of what is this umbrella that we're working with and some of the fundamental characteristics of the healer overall category. You are here to serve. That is one of the primary motivations, the primary directives of the healer is if you are a healer, you are here to serve in some capacity. You are here to live a life of devotion to a cause or a mission that involves some level of healing, empowerment. Uh, and again, we're getting into different flavors here, but healing, empowerment, uplifting, transmutation of energy for yourself and usually for either the people, animals, planet, words, something around you. And that's where you get into some of the different subcategories. But as a healer, you were here to serve and you were here to do that in an uplifting way. Yeah, I think that's that's a beautiful description. I also like to think of that, you know, healers that we are here as, you know, spiritually, energetically, physically congruent. That you know, there's this this um, you know overriding sensation of of balance, right? Because most healing comes from actually just bringing things back to balance or homeostasis or kind of that place where everything feels like, Oh, like there's, you know, we've released or we've, you know, brought in or whatever that is, all of the processes that go through into healing work, like there's that homeostasis state. So I think congruency is an important aspect of what, who we are as healers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, uh, I would also add, with that connection, the healer archetype is very sensitive to how do we exist as a part of the larger whole. And, and some of that does come with congruence. So not only um, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual on the micro level here, but also what is the congruence and the connection of looking beyond to what is my place in the world as you know, a cell in the infinite cosmic body here, so to speak, and how can I then bring balance to that as well? So it's this aspect of kind of interconnectedness working within the greater, uh, the greater aspect of the whole. Absolutely. Um, and that we're, we're, you know, we're utilizing intuition, in, in some kind of way, like there's the skills and the training and the, the lineages and all of the things. And also there is, you know, it's, it's kind of like, cause the, the, like the healer is, a, is their own tool um, and their own study in a lot of ways, right? That we really, we learn how we engage with the world and our healing work through our own engagement with ourselves and our own healing work with ourselves and, um, you know, our own development of our, like we're developing us like, you know, Oh, am I intuition? Okay. I have to develop that. Well, okay. What does that take? It, it is our own personal development, uh, and growth, which is, I believe a mark of, of, you know, what, it, what a healer really is. 
Mm -hmm. And that gets into some of the, you know, what is the expression of your service is usually you end up offering the type of healing that you yourself has, have most needed because that's what you become an expert in. So, you know, intuitive is, it is a subcategory of this larger healer umbrella. And yet I, that trait is fairly consistent across the board with different some yeah. archetypes as well. Um, let's speak to some of the challenges of the, the healer umbrella as well before we get into some of the more specifics. So I think um, let's just speak to <clears throat> the healer as kind of one of the biggest manifestations of the, the challenge aspect. You know, Kat, I know that you, you do a lot of work with that in the healer's process course. Yes. Yeah, so when we're looking at the, the wounded healer, and sometimes this is, is a confusing one because uh, people kind of look at it and go, well, I don't want to be the wounded healer. Like, that's horrible. Why would I want to be that? And, and that means that there's something wrong with me. And that means that I'm broken. And uh, I, I will tell you that, that mo I, you know, in my experience, a lot of healers have gone through the process of feeling like I'm a bit broken. There's something that's going on that, that I have needed or am even in the process of healing from. And, you know, the, the wounded healer, the, the trouble with being the wounded healer and having had issues or going through issues is that there can be a tendency to project that into the client experience, to project that onto other people, to allow those wounds, um, if they're not fully healed, to kind of take over the, the healing environment and the healing experience, to kind of cloud, to cloud that intuition in a way with your own personal crap. So that, that's one of the issues of, of the wounded healer that can come up. Uh, if if things haven't been worked through. And the, then when you hear that, you go, oh, well, that means that if I have not worked through every last little bit of my own personal development and healing story, then I can't be an offering. I can't do my work. I can't be a healer in the world. And so it's sort of this little mouse wheel that people get on where they're like chasing their own tail, trying to figure out when they're capable of being a healer and am I okay yet? And is this what I should be doing? And am I healed enough? And am I whole enough? And, um, you know, am I, you know, it becomes this anxiety point for people. So it, it's, it's a fascinating archetype to work with because it, teaches us about our traumas and our wounds and the things that we've been through that have caused us pain and takes us through the healing process of working on ourselves, and then allows us to rise into this evolved wounded healer who is able to hold space for things at a much higher level at a deeper level deeper higher wider every every possible uh, way of being because those wounds have been felt and they have been worked through and the processes have been studied and you know it, it gives depth to to who you are as a person that you've had problems it's everybody everybody's had everybody's got something uh, mm -hmm. and usually that something whatever that is inspires you to train and to study and to sit with yourself and to, to do the work, right? Yeah. I think also let's, uh, you know, well said, yes. And let's just zoom out to look at where did the idea of the wounded healer come from? Because I think that's helpful. Uh, and just very, very quickly, we're not doing a mythology topic here, although that would be a fun, uh, a fun podcast for a later date. Um, Chiron is kind of the original wounded healer, right? So he was a centaur and he was known for being a philosopher, a, um, a wise 
one in many ways. And, uh, and the story is, you know, he experienced um, a couple of different moments of wounding in his life, you know, some abandonment, and then also, you know, by his father, Apollo, I, I think, maybe, and then um, this, the deal with like, the arrow something, I'm totally botching this mythology right now. But, <laughs> but you know, something with an arrow, and he was like, you know, he was immortal, so he couldn't die, but he was wounded for, for the rest of his life. And it was about him coming into relationship with this wound and really you know working with his innate gifts as a sage as a wise one and uh and showing up in this you know cat like you were speaking to showing up as fo having fully felt and experienced and been through the wounding process and having that support him in his work and and how he's shown Going up in an even bigger way. So maybe let's like bookmark that. If you want to go back, um, I invite all of you tuning in to go have a look at the mythology of Chiron. That's C H I R O N, and uh, and just go have a look into that because I do think it's pretty interesting for future reference. Yeah, and I you know I I think that this is a it's a consistent story though because even in the uh, in studying Umbanda in the Afro-Brazilian tradition, um, one of like the, the, the great healer who is, uh, you know, compassion and self-love and understanding humanity, it comes from a, a, a being who was rejected by his mother because he, he, she was a goddess and rejected by his mother because he was, had a uh, smallpox and, uh, there were, you know, he's leprosy, leprosy right? yeah, smallpox and leprosy. And like, there's like all of these, uh, you know, um, and, and in that he was rejected and sent to live in the ocean and, or he was saved by Yamanja to go live in the ocean and, uh, and became this great studier. Like he was like, okay, well, I'm going to study humanity. I'm going, you know, his intellect and his compassion and his grace uh, eventually, you know, he, he came to, to be known for that, to, to be the healer of, you know, the, the people who are going through hard times and are having horrible illnesses and things that are keeping them from loving themselves uh, is, you know, this, this kind of a god, I mean, sort of a, a different cosmology, but, uh, you know, this archetypal representation of who, what it is to be the wounded healer. Mm -hmm. So if you are uh, asking yourself, what kind of healer am I supposed to be? You know, if you do get the calling and it doesn't come with a specific set of instructions, then, you know, kind of tune into, well, what kind of healing have I most needed? And that's <clears throat> the best place to start. You know, start with yourself, again, knowing that the gift of the healer is to move into balance, to see the connection between ourselves and those around us, and to find our place in right relationship with that connection. Yeah. So and <clears throat> because you can see this everywhere, and you might not be looking for it, because a lot of times when you see people who are at their fully actualized place, you you kind of pedestalize them and you think, oh, well, they've never had any problems or they don't have any problems now or whatever that is. But if you start to dig into their story, usually, you know, the people who are doing the most profound work on self-love or sexuality or, uh, you know, all of this realm of relationships, like they have had a intense need to figure that out because of what they've had to go through in their life to go, oh, okay, this is, this is a real problem. I'm going to figure this out for myself. And through the process of figuring that out and doing that healing work, it's like, oh, this is inspiring. How can I help people with this? Because this is, this has really changed my life. Like, okay, like I, I want to help people with this. And you see that people who have, uh, who are, are working physical, you know, physical body work and, and stuff like that as well. Like once you learn their stories, you're like, oh, you broke your spine and then you became a massage therapist. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so in other words, they have been through the initiations of the challenge part of the spectrum as, as their uh, healer self and then come into the gift side of that. 
So let's get into, um, you know, I hope it, it's making sense as you're tuning in. I hope it's becoming very obvious why it's a really good idea to tune in with these different sub archetypes and, and the overall of the archetype. Um, you know, this is really how we get to come into the fullest expression of our healership. Mm -hmm. Really, this is the, you know, and, and as we're getting into, we are by no means covering all of the sub archetypes of the healer today. That <laughs> would is be impossible. a whole series in itself. Impossible. That's like an exhaustive course right there that neither of us are teaching at this time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. yes, I, I don't know where that came from. Like my, it may come later, who knows? Um, but uh, but looking at these and starting to come into investigation of, well, what are the different faces of the healer? How, who is showing up for me really strongly right now? And how is going through the initiations and the challenges of that sub archetype actually a step for me to move into the gift face of this sub archetype? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really, it's all school, right? It's all training. It's all, as these archetypes are showing up, it's because you are here to move through the challenges. You are here to claim the gifts of that archetype. Yeah, and I love the way that you're, you're talking about these initiations, right? Because a lot of times we look at our life and we go, oh, this horrible thing happened to me, or oh, I'm wounded, right? I have this trauma, I have this problem, I have this thing that it just plagues me. And then... It's through that initiate, initiatory pro process, you know, I, I know a lot of people who they're, yeah. go through the initiation yeah. of, of really like the lowest of the low experience in their life in some kind of way, whether it's through physical, mental, emotional, spiritual dis-ease, uh, illness, injury, trauma, something that sends them and catapults them into this pushing them through the birth canal to become who that they were meant to be in the first place. But it, it takes that, it takes that initiatory experience. So even if you feel like you're still in that, like, yeah, I'm just like, Oh my God, I'm in it. I'm in it so bad. I'm just like in the thing. Uh, know that it, that part doesn't last forever. It is there to signal you into inquiry. And the more that you're being like emotionally triggered and uh, like it's being just kind of put in your face, then that is a really good sign that this is a place to tune into and go, okay, I'm in this archetypal energy right now. I'm in maybe that challenge aspect of the archetypal energy. Okay, so if that's the challenge aspect of the archetypal energy, let me look at the other side of that coin. You know, let me look at the other pieces that are that are with that with that energy. So, um, how do we? I think one of the questions is like, how do we? Sorry, I I went away and came again. That's okay. There you are. <laughs> Yay. Um, I was going to add in one more note about uh, initiations. In case you missed it, a couple of weeks ago, we had a guest on Katerina Satori, and we spoke with her about initiations on a feminine leadership path. So there was a lot of really awesome information in there as well about initiations and initiatory experiences. I highly recommend you go back and have a listen to that because it was so good. And, uh, and that does illuminate further what we're talking about today. Yeah. So. So, Michelle, like, what would you say are some ways that we can discover or tune into sort of the dominant archetype that, you know, are archetypes that we're working with right now? Sure. Well, and with that, I also want to give some examples of what are some of the predominant sub healer or sub archetypes of the healer that we're seeing. Um, I would say what was helpful for me, or I guess I've had this happen in a few different ways where, uh, you know, as I've been journeying through the evolution of, well, who am I as a healer? Who is, you know, who is the dominant face of my healership right now in my work in this world? Um, there have been different sub archetypes who have kind of shown up at different times to help me explore that. And it's come through the form of 
of either like someone telling me you're a shaman and then I'm like, what does that mean? And then I go figure it out. So it's, you know, maybe someone tells you or maybe you have a dream or maybe you, uh, you meet someone who is a priestess or, um, or whatever the deal is. And then it's like, oh, that it hits a resonance with you. There's some kind of resonant frequency of it touches something and goes ding. And you're like, okay, I need to pay attention to that. Um, if, if that hasn't happened, but you're kind of like, okay, well, I know I'm a healer and I'm not sure exactly where to go from here. I would actually suggest going to look up, you know, one of, I know Carolyn Miss is really good uh, resource for the archetypes. She's got a whole bunch of different resources about, uh, about these different archetypes. Um, just go kind of look at a list. Yeah, there's lists online. So, yeah. you know, you already mentioned the shaman. Um, I know the priestess yeah. or the priest. Uh, I know when you went through healer's process, you really were working with the Oracle at that time, mm -hmm. um, the witch, the seer, the psychic, uh, the medicine person, uh, you know, there's so many, the sound healer, there's, uh, the sexual healer, uh, mm -hmm. what else you got? The, the alchemist, the is alchemist, one of a big one, ones. um, the, yeah, and so um, just to finish up the like ways to investigate this, like, oh, seriously, just go look at a list if it hasn't made it's on the auto side sorry we had a it got all clunky and funky with the internet um so but what what i was hearing was just mm -hmm. go check out a list and it's a really good way and, yeah. and look for the the trigger yeah. because that's it because it's poking a challenge for you or look for the the glowy resonance because you're stepping into the gift but either way yeah. look for a, an it's, energetic it's an, em response. an energetic emotional response and um I, you know i like to look at the ones that make you feel kind of horrible <laughs> that you know that make you like want to run away and you're like no i don't want to be that and uh mm -hmm. kind of freak you out kind of on a deeper level uh because i think that those have a lot of juice for us and are you know we're where we've got maybe some past life stuff that's there for us where we're like, no, I'm never going to be that again. Or we have some uh, views about what that archetype means in the world. Like if I am that, then that means this, you know, yeah. um, a lot of these archetypes hold certain frequencies that are challenging around being alone, being kind of outside of the tribe. Uh, or, you know, we have a lot of stuff, uh, right now that around not being financially stable or successful or being able to make money or to have a family. There are a lot of sort of these, these internal things, these, these conflicts that come up when we think about the particular archetypes, I won't be loved. I won't be accepted. I won't be. ABC, whatever it is that comes up for you, uh, that is often a signal point to go, oh, okay, so is that really the truth? And what do I need to work through in order to be able to integrate this part of who I am, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know for me, I, I so struggled. I know, Michelle, you struggled as well a lot with uh, you know, it's so funny that we have this shaman sister sessions because I know both of us struggled so much with the word shaman and that, that archetype of the shaman. Uh, it took years for both of us to integrate that into who we are, even though we've been doing shamanic work and studying shamanic work for, for a long time. So it's because there are these ideas of what it means. It means this. 
Um, and now, you know, we have, uh, oh, if I, if I say that I am that, or if I express myself as that, I'm going to be whatever it is, whatever you have there for you, you know, rejected or judged or, you know, whatever it is, like might even feel like I'm going to be killed. I'm going to die. If I am that, if I am that, uh, when I was working with the, the archetype of the witch, that's a really challenging archetype to work with because there is so much collective history on the uh, persecution of anyone who had that frequency in even a very small way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, uh, I, I want to get into a minute of kind of what are we seeing really showing up for people right now, but um, the, about the oracle because I do think that one um, but I think gift had um, I already done a, a great deal of claiming around so looking at the signatures of the oracle while well, the the oracle goes into the trance state and channels a transmission or a message um, usually in conjunction with um, and, and the oracle quite often historically worked in conjunction with a certain deity or certain um, temple or certain entity and the oracle showed up for me a couple of years ago as a, a fairly emotionally charged one and I wasn't sure why well because I already do channeling and I already do these transmissions but uh, one of the, the pieces around the Oracle that was important for me to work through was the fact that historically in, in most traditions, Oracles were slaves. They were spiritual slaves to the temples where they were um, bound. They were drugged. They were raped. They were abused. They were, um, and in some cases, sacrificed. They were young maidens quite often who uh, who had no lives of their own and it was an, it was spiritual enslavement. And I think it was very important for me to examine that archetype, not necessarily for the gift side of, okay, channeling transmissions, but how am I somehow embodying this aspect of enslavement in my work? How am I somehow releasing my sovereignty, releasing my freedom or, or um, or putting myself in a vulnerable, dangerous position in some way in relation to my work. And that was coming up a couple of years ago. I think it was really important. Yeah, I, I love that. I love that, Michelle, because it's, you know, if you, if you hadn't taken the time to look at that and be present with it and go, oh, crap, there's something really here for me, then you might have missed some, some gold, right? Some stuff that was there that I think could have a, a huge impact on the amount of money that you're making, right? Because I know that like even in, since you did that work on the Oracle, like your, your income has improved dramatically. Your boundaries working with your clients has improved dramatically. Um, you know, like there's all of these sort of subtle things that we don't realize, oh, that's, that's connected to that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. How do I... How do I connect? How do I, how do I heal that part that, that subtly is getting into our work and into our relationships and, you know, creating uh, these, these issues with, within us? Yeah. And I'll, I'll zoom out for just a second to acknowledge, you know, this is one of the ways that I have experienced really direct uh, benefit from working with this particular archetype of just changing my relationship to my service where it no longer feels like an obligation. It no longer feels like I'm not allowed to say no when someone needs my help. It no longer feels like, um, uh, you know, like I have no life outside of my work and my practice because of that, the energetic signatures around enslavement were, were really strong. And, and, and that I think, you spoke to it beautifully you know my my office hours have changed my income 
has changed in a good way. My my practice is everything else. What, um, Kat, I would actually reflect back to you. What is one of the, the main archetypes that you felt like you have worked with in a big way and that has informed your practice? Oh, let's see. I mean, you know, I, I just mentioned uh, a couple of them that were really strong for me as far as working through um, the shaman and the witch and that uh, I, I, I think both of those, but especially working with the, with the witch, and I'm super witchy, I'm like ridiculously witchy, but even though, and like you're saying, it's like, even though I was, you know, working with herbs and the stones and, you know, a lot of nature stuff and doing all of the positive aspects until I really sat with the parts that were persecuted and, uh, you know, hurt and uh, unacknowledged and, and, you know, killed and that part of me that felt I am in danger for doing this work, that was, that was so important for me to be with because that was the difference between me being public on Facebook and putting things on business cards or saying things when I'm out in public with people at a party and actually claiming what I do or leading people into things in sessions that were the natural expression of who I was, it was kind of like I was letting myself sort of play safe in a way and be in the safe realm of that archetype, but not the full, full, full expression of what that energy is, what it means, and to claim it, to be through the initiatory process. We lost her again. Arg. It's okay. Last thing I heard sky. was uh, to move through the internet. <laughs> There's clouds uh, here, so that's an issue. Um, what I heard, Kat, was that you were talking about it really took for you to move through the initiations of the witch in order to fully claim the gifts. Exactly. And to own uh, all aspects of who I was and to also to do the inner healing work as well that that archetype needs. And when we're thinking about, okay, this is a collective unconscious. It's an energetic that we've all inherited and we all contain in a way. We all contain a relationship to it. So by doing my own inner work on it, by going into past life stuff, by working on the energetics within my field, by claiming it, by, by having a new relationship with it, I am also having an effective collective uh, you know, force into all of the other witches out there who are looking to claim their power and claim who they are on the planet and to do that ancestral work with my own ancestors who were actually involved in some witchy stuff and to do the healing work for myself, for my lineage, for women as a collective, uh, for all of the strange oddballs out there who have been persecuted over time just for being them. And so it's, it's not just you, you, it's not just, I'm doing this work over here, healing me. It's a larger scope that we're working to heal all people who are running that archetype and who have run that archetype in the past. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for more on that, I would encourage in case you missed it, go back and revisit the healing the archetypes episode because we spent about an hour delving into exactly that. Um, I want to, I know we're getting kind of to the end of oh our gosh, time. Oh my gosh, I can't believe the time. It's crazy. Yeah, I know we started a couple of minutes late because we were just having, <laughs> getting in the same place at the same time. But let's give a couple of really awesome tools. So we have suggested, you know, meditate. I, actually, this is the other piece is I would just sit and ask 
what yeah. archetype do I really need to learn from right now? Or what archetype is most prevalent and showing up for me right now? And just sit with your journal, do some free write, sit with your guides and see, um, you know, maybe a word will pop in your head or maybe you'll see an image or something that'll point you towards some mythology, point you at an archetype and you can start investigating exactly what we've been talking about here. What are the, the rites of passage? What are the initiations? And the challenges of this archetype and what are the gifts and where do I see myself in this expression? Mm -hmm. And then I, I think it's really important to go into a process of honoring this archetype of very heartfelt, uh, you know, gratitude and honor of all aspects of this energy and to embody it in a way to, you know, change something about yourself, the way that you're wearing your hair or, or you, the way that you're dressing or something uh, to embody it, to find a way to embody this, this energy. And that might be doing, uh, putting on some music that makes you think about that energetic and dancing that energy in your body and seeing what it makes you feel like and, and asking it questions, you know, what are you here for? And what am I here to express with your help? And starting to have this like collaborative experience with this energy as you start to integrate it inside of you, right? Because it's, it's, it's not outside of you, it's inside of you. So the more that you let yourself play with it and see what happens and go, okay, well, if I was, if I was this archetype, like, how would I show up in the world? Yeah, who am I as the oracle? Who am I as the witch? Who am I as the, the priestess, the queen, whoever? And I love that, the, the embodiment. And remembering that this, yeah, Kat, like you were saying, this is a part of us. This isn't anything that exists outside of us. It is helpful, I think, to visualize it as an external character. I, I like to, um, to offer people that idea of like, okay, well, let's go talk to your inner shaman. Let's go talk to your inner alchemist and to view it as something external because it's easier to for us to conceptualize and have a conversation but know that everything that you are witnessing every uh, word that you're exchanging every conversation that you have or or exchange with this seem you know archetype is actually you getting to know a part of yourself in a bigger way and um, and that's the other piece that i would suggest along that is like you know, thank, offer the gratitude, offer the embodiment, and also just like practice talking to it mm -hmm. as treat it as a, you know, an external entity, if that makes it easier for you. And, you know, sit down and interview your inner witch, say, hey, inner witch, you know, do you have a name? What do you look like? What do you, what are your gifts? What are your challenges? How can I get to know you better? How can we work together? You know, treat it like you're going on a new friend date with, with the new bestie, right? Because ultimately that's who this is. This is a, a part of yourself that you are getting to know and coming to the full healthy expression of that part of yourself. Yep, absolutely. Um, super, super fun and, and let it be fun, right? They, it, this is, it's healing work and it's, you know, it's deep. This can be really deep, profound, shifting work and let yourself, give yourself some space around it. So it's not like I need to do all 70 archetypes this week. It's like, no, like sit with one for a while, be with it for a while, like really be with it and just start to see what happens in your life because there will be external validations that come up, things that people say, things that you see in media, things that just like cross your path and you're like, okay, that's a little weird, but all right, I, I see you. Um, you know, changes in your environment will start to occur and then you get to kind of see the integration piece. You get to see it integrate into your life, into your work, into who you are as a person until you feel like, all right, I feel really solid with this one. All right, good. Great. Then move on to the next one. Like I, we get excited and we want to do everything at once, but just like let yourself be with one for a little while and like really develop that. Like it's a new friend and you're developing this relationship. Like 
give yourself the space to develop the relationship and know that it might, uh, it might up in your life a little bit, like it might mess you up a little bit. It might go, Oh my gosh, I had no idea that this was running in the background and I had no idea that I had, you know, this, these ideas about myself. Oh wow. Okay. This is changing the way I work. This is changing the way that I see myself. This is uh, changing the way that I'm going to be with people in my life. And that might cause a little bit of, of rockiness for uh, not, you know, forever, it'll settle back in, but it might shake things up. And that's usually a good thing because those changes that occur as we're going through this archetypal, you know, these initiations, that eventually leads to, as we said, the healer, uh, that balance state, that homeostasis, that place of being congruent. So that's what we're, where we're headed. So don't be afraid at, or if, if things feel a little shaky uh, when you start to integrate one of these archetypes. And if, even if you kind of feel like, wow, I've kind of, uh, sometimes I, I feel like I've just gone off the deep end a little bit. Like I am way deep. I'm so deep in this archetype. Like, Am I okay? Am I just like have I have I gone off off on to uh, you know complete insanity because I've totally changed like I'm dressing different I'm doing these different things I'm really interested in this uh, I'm reading these these particular books uh, and and sometimes it's like okay I I've just made a huge change in my life somehow by integrating and working with this archetype so have fun with it like. It's, it's let it be, let it, let it be fun, I think. Is and, it? and remember that, that all of that is still you, you know, yeah. that's, and ultimately there, as we're doing this investigation, we're doing it not only to come into the full expression of that, that archetype, but ultimately the archetype is, uh, is only a part of the whole organism. You know, archetypes, we embody so many different types of archetypes. We are way more complex. Archetypes are, um, to a, they're super useful tools, but they are, no person is the complete embodiment of only one archetype. No, and that, I think that's really important is like, if you're to look at an archetype, like there, I can guarantee you there is no human out there who is the perfect one-to-one -one embodiment of any given archetype. So know that, okay, you're exploring this facet of yourself so that you can call upon it so that it's fully expressed. And also ultimately remember that the whole, you know, one of the signature pieces of the healer is coming into balance. And that as you are exploring and integrating this archetype, even if you do pendulum swing a little bit in the other direction and do, you know, do some shapeshifter magic and all of a sudden you're like, who am I? Okay. You will come back into balance because there is more to you than that. Yeah. And there's so many archetypes and you're not just the heat. Like even if you're a healer, you're not just the healer archetypes. So you're also, you can still be the queen. You can still, you know, be the rebel. You can still be all of these other super juicy, fun archetypes. So go back to the healing archetypes uh, episode as well and, and tune into that. So you have all of these other archetypes as well. This is just uh, one you know, one side to this multi, 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 multi faceted gem that you are. So it's this one reflective point that we get to like look at ourselves and go, okay, cool, right? I get, I, I, I am, I am that too. I am that too. Let me claim it. What does it mean to claim it? What do I need to heal to claim it? What do I need to express to claim it? And who do I get to be in the world? fully integrated with this aspect of myself. And then I'm going to turn the gem and look at another mirror. Absolutely. I think that's a really good visual for that. And if you like, let us know how it goes. You can go ahead and reach out to us at shaman sister sessions at gmail.com. You can also contact us through our website, shaman sister sessions.com and let us know how this is landing for you. We are always open to hearing comments, love notes, uh, messages from uh, followers and listeners. So absolutely, if that resonates, we welcome to hear from you. And uh, you can go ahead and follow our Facebook page if you are not already, Shaman Sister Sessions. All of our past episodes, we did reference a couple in here, the um, Healing the Archetypes and the 
Queen and King, Royal Archetypes of the Feminine and Masculine. These and all of our other episodes are up on our YouTube channel, Shaman Sister Sessions, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher for the audio versions. So please subscribe, like our, our feed, like our posts, like all our stuff, and help us do the work of getting these healing messages out there in the world. Thank you, uh, Jacqueline. And thank you to um, our amazing patrons who are contributing to our support in this work. And if you would like to become a patron of our work, if you believe in our message, if you've experienced some benefit from our work or episodes, please absolutely know that any and all financial contributions are enormously appreciated. There are so many behind the scenes costs to running a podcast and we want to continue doing this for free. You can become a patron of our work at patreon.com slash shaman sister sessions. And, uh, and that's P A T R E O N.com slash shaman sister sessions. And we want to give a special shout out to Jacqueline and Kai, our alchemical allies, uh, for their pledges and support uh, and continued support of our amazing work. So thank you so much for uh, for all that you do and showing up for us. Kat, do you have anything that you want to tell us about that's going on? Um, let's see. Oh, I am actually next Tuesday going to be even going deeper into it's an hour of the wounded healer. So we're going to be talking about the wounded healer. We'll be meeting our wounded healer and kind of diving even deeper into what does this mean? What does this mean for our healing work? And that will be a masterclass at 2.30 uh, next week. If you're interested, check it out on my Facebook page. I don't even know if I posted it on my Facebook page. It's probably on my website. Uh, you can send me a message. But I am also uh, starting the healer's process, which is the three-month uh, intensive online course. We'll have a retreat at the end, but this is the full on healers process of taking you through everything that you need to know to be working on yourself, uh, and then starting to work on other people in a new, more profound, authentic way, fully cleansed and purified, safe and held within your own amazingness. So that is actually starting at the beginning of June. So if you are interested, please reach out right away or go to my website, catherinebird.com. It's under classes. So it's pretty easy to find. And I think that's, that's it for me right now. Uh, I have space for some one-on-one -on -one clients. So I am uh, feeling into that and taking in some consultations over the next few weeks. So uh, if you're interested in doing some deeper dive work, I am now uh, having chats with people about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a masterclass starting here in about an hour, just under an hour, and that's on embodying your mastery. So if you would like to join me for that, you can go ahead and uh, find it on either my Facebook page, which I will post it on now after we get off our episode, uh, or you you can also search for it under event bright embodying your mastery with Michelle Hawk. He us through our circle on all my to the people who follow me uh, regularly through the newsletter um, that way. And you can go ahead and sign up to be in my inner circle at joyofenergy.com, anywhere in any of the opt-in boxes, and you will be sure to get all the best articles and, and offerings that I have for you. So uh, on that note, that was uh, a little, it was a little clunky, Michelle. So it's, uh, it's via Eventbrite and it is, it, is it embody or embodied or is it embodying or embody your mastery? Embody your mastery. Okay. Embody your mastery with Michelle Hawk on Eventbrite. That part got a little gerbled, gerbled. Okay. Gerbled. Awesome. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. And thank you so much for joining us. It is our great joy to keep offering this work to you. Please join us next week on Tuesday, the 29th for the nature of healing, where we're going to talk about this question. Can we ever fully heal? And so please tune in for our live panel discussion on that topic. We have a lot of clients and actually listeners ask us that question of what does that actually mean? Like how does healing work? And can we actually,
actually heal in this lifetime. So we'll be tuning into that next week on Tuesday the 29th, and we'll see you then. Thank you so much. Thanks, Michelle. Bye. Bye.